Hey everybody, uh, Rich here. Just uh, wanted to show you what I'm doing with the uh, leftover carcass of my uh, cabinet. I had a peninsula cabinet in the kitchen. So, um, so this project that I'm uh, wanting to show you is ha basically how to create a, uh, a, a workbench that you can use within uh, your garage. So the differences between you know using this in a kitchen. Um, and in a garage, is you, you definitely want to be able to move it around um, as needed. What I'm planning to do is a, essentially I'm going to take uh, this toe kick area and cut this off and make it flush um, across here. And then I'm going to go ahead and reinforce a little bit on the bottom um, for the span that I have so that it doesn't bow in, with the weight uh, that will be on, um, that'll be inside the cabinet once I get it completed. Um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and add some, um, some casters to the bottom of it uh, so that I can wheel it around once, um, once it's complete. So this is a pretty long span and I was deciding whether or not to actually cut it down to make it a little bit shorter to fit what I need. But, but if you didn't have uh, a length this long and wanted to create something longer, you can, you can basically uh, create a, a cabinet of this length by just um, you know, stacking them together and then attaching them to uh, either the bottom, you know, put a three quarter inch piece of plywood all along the bottom and set them on there and then attach it to that three quarter inch piece of plywood. Um, and then you would have something um, that was of the same length. So uh, for example, my current, um, my current workbench is, um, this was my, my brother's actually, his old kitchen cabinets that he had. So as you can see here, these are two separate cabinets. The over here is a two separate cabinets and that's a separate cabinet. And I basically just took a piece of three quarter inch plywood. And then once I cut off the toe kick, I, I set it on that plywood and then I screwed into the bottom of it. And that way it's, it's all together. And then I screwed the two, the cabinets themselves together. So the only thing that I'm keeping in mind when, as I'm building this one is I want to make sure, even though these two sets of cabinetry are very different in the way they're constructed, I want to make sure that that uh, the height, the overall height of the cabinet is the same as this one because I may be butting it up against, uh, you know, alongside it as I push this one down. If you're creating something from scratch and you don't necessarily uh, need to match a particular height that uh, I have of this existing cabinet, you're, you're, this is not something that you need to be concerned about. Um, obviously, you want to try to keep your countertops um, Workable. I mean, obviously, the workable height is 36 inches. You know, if you want it a little bit higher, um, you can. You can certainly make it like 37 is, is pretty good. Um, but I, I wouldn't go much much more than that unless you're a pretty tall person and you know you feel like you you want that. But uh, first thing I want to do is go ahead and get started and, and cut this off. So that's what we're going to do first. So. For the bottom, I'm going to use casters, and so the ones that I purchased, I went to Harbor Freight and found some um, some four-inch casters, and these will hold uh, 350 pounds. Um, they only had three with uh, with rotating wheels. Um, I wanted all of them to be rotating. I was planning on having it so that I could move it all around, but unfortunately, they only had three, and I didn't really want to wait around until they got more in stock. So. I bought two of the uh, pivoting ones, and then I got two fixed ones. Um, so these don't spin. Um, it, it'll work, it's fine. And it was uh, fairly inexpensive, so I mean, I got like maybe $23 into the whole thing. Uh, I just have leftover wood from, from my cabinet. Now obviously, if you needed to go buy some plywood, you can. I'm just using leftover plywood to kind of reinforce the bottom. Um, actually, this is the finished side of this birch, but uh, it's not a big deal. It's, uh, I used the, the unfinished side to glue. So basically, I just glued this all up and then put some, um, some brad nails into it just to keep it secure. I'll end up drilling holes all the way through to put the casters on. I'm just going to nut and bolt the casters uh, to, to the cabinet. 
Um, so this is just kind of giving it some reinforcement so that it's thicker because this is only a half inch piece of wood, I think. Uh, so this will thicken it up some so that it has um, a pretty good base to work from um, to hold the weight. Um, now what I'm doing is rather than putting a, a three quarter inch piece all across the bottom to kind of stiffen it up, I'm just going to use some two by fours um, to kind of run the span to um, make, make it... Um, so that it doesn't uh, bow and flex in the middle. Um, <clears throat> so that's, that's how I'm gonna do it. So I'm gonna glue it and screw it to the bottom and then glue and screw the next one. So I'll have two pieces of uh, two by four. Um, I used wood glue here, but I think I'm gonna go, go ahead and use liquid nail on this because it's, uh, it's a little thicker and it's a little more forgiving because this is not as flat as, as what these pieces of plywood are. So let's go ahead and uh, do that. So, um, so I got the uh, cabinet up on the uh, table here just to make uh, putting the uh, back a little on a little easier. Um, so I cut a couple of pieces of plywood down. I don't have a, uh, a full piece to cover the back of it. I have some three quarter inch cabinet grade stuff that's long enough but it's not tall enough. So. I'm using two pieces, so I'm using this piece and then the piece below it um, and kind of stack them up. And what I'll do is I'll probably get a piece of uh, three quarter inch and run in between them just to tie them together. Uh, it's not ideal, you know, obviously if you're making this cabinet or the cabinet was already there, you'd probably want to put a solid piece of maybe three quarter inch or at least half inch plywood all the way across um, the back just to strengthen it up some. Um, because most backs of cabinets are only a quarter inch piece of plywood and it's really thin so you probably want to go ahead and add at least a half inch if not three quarters to the back just to make it stronger because you're going to be holding a whole lot more weight with tools and things like that um, and plus you want it to be a little bit um, sturdy enough to, to stay square uh, with uh, you know pushing it around and, and having it on casters. I'm just using uh, brad nails in it uh, one and a quarter inch brad nails um, and and some glue uh, just to just to set it up and it, it should be plenty strong for for what I need um, so let me go ahead and do that back to work on uh, this uh, cabinet project that I'm working on this workbench and uh, so the next step um, that I need to do is to go ahead and attach the wheels um, the casters um, I went to the hardware store and got some um, some hardware to install those and the size um, nuts and bolts that I decided to use was 5 sixteenths so I got 5 sixteenths and based on the thickness of the wood that I have, I had a half inch uh, plywood here and then this is three quarter inch. Um, that's going to put me at about one and a quarter um, and I wanted to have enough space for the nut to attach and then some fender washers and a couple of lock washers so I ended up going with, with two inch um, bolts, um, two inch length bolts and then uh, so I got a, some 16 uh, fender washers for the the top side and then I used lock washers that I'll be attaching on this side. The only thing that I wanted to keep in mind is when I do, when I make this one, it's not necessarily an issue. I can put it all the way up against the front and not have a problem because it doesn't swivel. 
um, but on this one it will. If I put it up against the front, it won't allow it to turn. So I do need to set it back some um, so that it allows the wheel to spin uh, freely all the way around so that it doesn't hit the, the front edge of the, of the cabinet. Um, so what I ended up uh, measuring out is it about setting it back about a, a, a one and a half inches will give me enough room for it to clear and and not uh, cause any issues there. And so I'm going to go ahead and set this back at one and a half. That way, uh, both front will be in line with each other. So I um, <laughs> flipped it over and uh, I want to paint it, but uh, it's got some grime and stuff on it <clears throat> and some scratches. And I'm not really worried about all the scratches because there's no way I'm going to get all of them up and nor do I really care about most of the scratches, but I just want to give it a light once over with some sandpaper to uh, give it um, a rough enough surface for the, uh, for the paint to stick and maybe get rid of some of the blemishes that are there. So I'm gonna go over it with 100 grit and then uh, lightly and then go over uh, one more time with 150 and, uh, and then I'm gonna go ahead and paint it. <laughs> So I'm um, getting ready to paint now, and uh, just wanted to show you what color I'm, ch what I chose uh, for a color. Um, as you can see, most of my garage is uh, pure white. You know, I, I want to give it a little bit of color. The gray cabinet within the, uh, you know, the the um, the current workbench was just the color that my brother had chosen for his kitchen. Um, and I left it the way it was, but since I'm painting this new cabinet, um, I'm going to go ahead and paint both cabinets so that they'll match um, somewhat. I chose a red color. It was between a, like a royal blue and a red. I just wanted to have a little bit of a pop of color in, in the garage. This is the color that I chose. Um, it's called Timeless Ruby. Um, so a uh, tip on painting red obviously uh, you normally in the wall you would want to prime it I'm not necessarily priming this uh, I just don't feel like uh, doing the work uh, certainly it will hold up a whole lot better if I do prime it but I'm not really concerned about you know the longevity of it um, in terms of m making sure that it's completely nice I just want to get a coat of paint on it and be done with it um, but since I'm going with these dark these bright colors and any bright color like a blue or a green or if it's very saturated color you're gonna have to do more than one coat in fact you're probably gonna have to do three or four coats um, and I've learned that through experience just needs more coats to get the full effect of the color um, it, it just doesn't get as deep until you add more coats to it in any case this is the color um, we're gonna get the first coat on there see it's gonna soak it up because I'm not using primer so I just want to go ahead and get something on there. I got a gallon of it. That's more than enough to do both of these cabinets. So I'm not worried about coverage as far as having enough. So let's just go ahead and get a co coat on there and uh, we'll get to work.
So there's the completed cabinet. Um, this is, uh, you know, a quick and easy way to create yourself a, a workbench in the garage, uh, utilizing some old kitchen cabinets. You know, with a little bit of modification and a little bit of, uh, you know, elbow grease, you can go ahead and get yourself uh, a pretty good cabinet that uh, has a pretty good storage capability and has good maneuverability and, and lots of flexibility and to meet you know your particular needs obviously your cabinet may look a lot different than what mine will look like but you know this gives you a sense of what you can come up with 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 very little investment it turned out real nice I'm pleased with it um, now it's just a matter of um, uh, moving it into place and uh, filling it all up with all the other tools and, and hardware that I have um, waiting because uh, my garage is in desperate need of uh, getting some organization done to it. So, uh, you know, hopefully this project is useful to you and you can uh, come up with a, a workbench on your own. Um, all right.